Hey guys, this is Rob. In this video, we're going to revisit the a custom exit sign that we made previously. And this time I'm gonna show you how to add some arrows to that exit sign with parameters that turn them on or off for each of the different faces and for left and for right. I think you'll find this very handy when using exit signs in your commercial lighting plans. So stay tuned. We're in my electrical families library file here where before I've shown the different kinds of out of the box Revit content as well as some of my own custom content that I've made. And I have a previous video that I did on creating this little exit sign as a custom family. And it has the option to turn on and off the second face of this symbol by going to the type parameters and turning off second face like this with just an on off button which is very handy. And then you can also spin this around with a space bar to get exit signs into your lighting plans. But today I want to expand further on this symbol and show what we can do for the arrows because of course many times you need arrows on your exit signs on the face pointing left or right. So one way you can do that and the first way that we, we did this is to just create an annotative symbol that's an arrow. And down here, I have one called the ER symbol exit sign arrow. And it is just a separate symbol that is the arrow like this. And so you can put an arrow right there. And I have thin lines turned on. So let's get those off. And you can see how bold that is. Now, if I need a double ended arrow, oh, I could create another double ended arrow. Or sometimes what I'll do is I'll just make a copy of this, create similar rotate it around and then just put it in the same place. So simple, you know, this is a good way to start with how you want symbols to be done. And then also what we can do is turn on the second face for this type. And again, just copy these symbols around. So that is one way you can do this and you'll have to get these arranged the way you want. But if I turn my exit sign, well, now I have to do the arrows. So what we've decided is we would like a little more functionality in this exit sign family so that the arrows are part of the family and be, can be controlled with some more on and off buttons. So I'm going to show you how we do that. And you'll learn how to assign visibility parameters to these families. So let's get right into editing this family. So what we're going to do, first of all, is get rid of these arrows. We're actually going to edit this family. Now, again, you if you haven't done this, you may want to watch that previous video I have of creating this separate exit sign family. And it is a non-hosted custom exit sign. It's not ceiling hosted or wall hosted. It is free floating. You can put it wherever you want. So let's hit edit family. And again, this is a little more of an advanced topic, but one you will eventually want to get into and understand as you're creating your own custom content for your office or your practice. So here's a little 3D view of that exit sign. And in, in that video, I showed you how we created these words that turn on and off with that same visibility button. But let's look at the reference level. And in this reference level, we can actually see the symbol. Remember that symbols are an annotative element that are a nested family. This symbol is, as you can see, I can edit this family. It's its own family that is brought into the overall exit sign family. So that this symbol will always be, for example, an eighth inch circle if you were to print it out. The extrusion of the exit sign, the actual physical sign, is a certain size in the dimensions of the model itself. So maybe it's a foot long by six inches tall in the model. But on paper in two dimensions, I want the symbol to always be an eighth inch circle. So therefore, it is not just drafting elements drawn in this family. It is a symbol that is brought in. So we actually need to edit this symbol and then map or associate some parameters. So again, this is a little more complicated, a little more advanced, but Hopefully you can learn something from this. So let's get into this symbol itself. And now we are in a generic annotation family that this symbol is created in. And because it's drawn at such small dimensions, eighth inch and quarter inch, it looks like a blob. So we need to go to thin lines to deal with this. 
So what we have as a review is just a circle, and it's just generic annotation lines. When I created this, I did not create a separate line type or line style for this. It's just a generic annotation. So another step further would be to create a separate line style for this family that we can adjust. We're going to keep a generic annotation for now. It's my main point is to show you some of this visibility stuff. So if I click on this, if it, it's hard to get to it, but if I click on it, it's a little pie piece. And over here, you can see it has a visible on or off. And the far right, this little button here, I do not have this face associated with a parameter. It's just always on. We're always going to have at least one face on an exit sign or why, why put it up. This other, this other triangle or pie piece, old school trivial pursuit, anybody? Anyway, this pie piece is actually the visibility you can see here is grayed out because the little equal sign over here on the right, right there, it is controlled and associated with a family parameter named second face. And it's a yes, no type of visibility parameter that turns it on or off. And it is mapped or associated with a parameter so that we can map it further in the exit sign family and then we can get to it in our model. So we, we are a few levels deep here with nesting. But let me show you what I do for these arrows. So over here under create, we are just creating lines. And these are just an annotative drafting type line within this family. You click on line, we're using the generic annotation line style. And I just want to put an arrow. And this is my first face up top. So that we're going to do the first face first. And I'm going to create a line that's something like, what, a sixteenth of an inch on this side. And then I also want it to go here. To, so to center it, I'm just creating half and then half. So there's the eighth inch line. So we have an eighth inch wide line. This is wide as this sign. And then I also want to go to create and get some arrowheads and I'm just drawing the entire line and arrowheads and everything for this thing first and then I'm going to assign some parameters to the visibility of these lines and arrows. So I want something maybe a 35 degree and let's get it to be about this long. The 1 32nd is about the minimum dimension of a line. So something like that and then I'm going to mirror this line along this axis. So I'll go up here to mirror, pick an axis, and then use this as the axis, and it creates another line below. And then I want to mirror this arrow to the other side. So click both, hold down the control. And again, I can use this construction line, reference line, reference plane as my mirror axis. So click that. And then you also, one thing you'll notice here is that the copy is selected, which means it will copy when it mirrors. It doesn't just replace this. It, you can go either way. So we you do want to copy this. So use this as the axis, and there it mirrored. And then furthermore, I can take this whole thing, window select it, hit mirror by picking an axis, and use this horizontal reference plane. So now I have all of the graphics that I eventually want to be visible. But now I need to create some parameters, on off type visibility parameters to control these. By the way, if you're getting some value out of this video, I'd sure appreciate you hitting that thumbs up like button down below. And if you wanna see more electrical only future videos, please hit the subscribe button. Thanks a lot, I appreciate you. You can create these parameters on the fly as I select pieces and, and try to map them, but I like to kind of get the overall picture first. So I'm going to create these parameters first. Up here under family types, top left, little, the little blue squares allows you to enter parameter values for existing family types. I can add parameters to the family or create new types. So I'm going to be adding some parameters. I already have one in here called second face. Now I want to create some more. So let's go down here to the second button called new parameter. And in new parameter, I'm going to be creating family parameters, and I'm going to call these a number of things. I'm going to call this arrow one left. 
So this is for if I want the arrow to point left as I'm looking at the face. So we'll see how that works. But arrow one left. And I want this to be an instance parameter. I want to be able to control these arrows in my model independent of the type of exit sign I have. So my types are a one or two face exit sign. Those are types because I may have an X1 or X2. But then the arrows are independent of the type. At least that's the way we use them. So instance, so there it added my arrow one left parameter under graphics. So I just need to do this for all of my different situations. I'm going to have an arrow one left and arrow one right. I'm going to have an arrow two left and an arrow two right. So let's just go through the rest of these quickly. Okay, so there we have our four arrows. One thing I'll note here is that this line part of the arrow is visible whether I have the left or right or both on. So I need to control it a little differently. I can't make this part of arrow left. It has to be part of both. So the way you can do that is to create what I would call a, a dummy parameter or a temporary parameter, kind of a hidden parameter. I'll show you what I mean. I want this guy to be on for either case of left or right arrow one. So what I'm going to do is go back up to my parameters. I'm going to create a parameter called, and I use lowercase, just lowercase for these hidden kind of parameters that I use. They're kind of behind the scenes. I don't want the user to actually feel like they need to jump in and, and modify this one. So I'm going to call this arrow one line, and it's also instance. And it's also a yes or no for visibility, but I'm going to keep it grouped under this other, not up here with graphics. So it kind of, it's kind of hidden in this list. And then I also need an arrow to line instance. It's a yes, no, and it also will be under other. These parameters can have a formula tied to them. We've done some other families and parameters where the formula has maybe done some calculations for loads and things like that if we want to combine some loads. I've got a family there where we add up all the loads within a single family dwelling, for example. In this case, this formula is going to be a logical formula. So, and, or, not, if, then statements. There's lots of formulas that and logic that you can put into these families. I mean, I've seen some people put up some, you know, some good lists of PDF documents of all these formulas. The one we want to do is an or statement. If arrow one left or arrow one right are selected, then we want the arrow one line to be visible. So the way you do this formula is it works with the statement first, or, and then in parentheses, you put the parameters that you're, you were applying the logic of or, either or to. So or, and you just type these in the way they're written. So if arrow one left, and then you put a comma between them, arrow one right. So what this does is it, it does the logical expression, arrow one left or arrow one right, then arrow one line is visible. So apply that. Same thing with arrow two. We want to have this line show up if either arrow two left or arrow two right is visible. So arrow to left, arrow to right. If either of those is selected, then I need this line. And you will notice that they become grayed out because the user now cannot select these. They are selected behind the scenes by this formula, this logical formula. Okay, so now we have the formula for the line, but we still need to apply the visibility of the actual arrows. Okay, stay with me here. So, this top one ends up being face one. But if we're standing here looking at the face, so looking down at the face, this arrow is on the left of that face, if you, if you will. These two guys, and we need to select with the control to hold them both down. They're both selected. The visibility of these two lines, we want to over here, It'll say associate family parameter. I also call, also call it mapping this parameter, mapping it to a type parameter within the family. Click on that. 
And now I want, because I've already created these parameters, I can just select the one. So I want this one to be arrow one left and say, okay. So now it associated, and it's grayed out here, it's associated this arrow with that parameter. And so I just need to do the same with the rest. This control, hold it down. This is going to be arrow one right. So we need to associate the visibility with arrow one right. Same thing down here. Now we're standing down at the bottom, looking up towards this face. This becomes the left arrow. So we want arrow two left right here, arrow two left. And then these guys control associate arrow to right there. So now we have our parameters set up, the hidden parameters set up. We've got all these arrows now mapped into or associated into our family parameters. The last thing we need to do is still map these lines to the parameters that we set up with the formulas. So as you can see right now, the visibility of this line is still not associated. So let's get this associated with, not with the, one of the arrows, but with the line parameter. So that's an arrow one line, and this guy is the arrow two line. Let's map it or associate it with the arrow two line. And there we go. Now we can go ahead and save this. And symbol exit sign with an option of one and save that. And then we want to load this into what? Into our exit sign itself, not into our library. This is just the symbol we're loading into the exit sign. We wanna overwrite the existing version. Now we can see that we have our new symbol that has its arrows. We can test this out. Now we, we don't see those parameters show up here on the right yet because we have not yet associated them from the symbol into this family. There's another round of association we need to do. So if we click on this, now we can see them. And let's just test them out. I wanna turn them all off. So now we have nothing. Let's see if we want arrow one left. Now this is face one up top. There's arrow one left. Let's try, turn that one off. Let's try arrow one right. There we go. So the line is showing in either version. Now, if you want both, there you go. Now, arrow two left should be pointing, yep. If we're looking at the face, it's pointing to the left. Uncheck that, try arrow two right. There we go. And then you try them both. And there we have it. And if we take this and hit spacebar and turn it around, it arrows go with it. So now we're ready to map these two type parameters within this family so that they will sh eventually show up in our model as controllable. So we do that with the buttons on the right. So arrow one left. Now we can go in and create the parameters from scratch again, or because we already have them made in the symbol, we can just do them one by one here. So this here, and we can see the name. So we wanna make sure it's exactly the same. We're not searching for a parameter. We don't have the parameter yet in this family. So remember where you are. So I need to create a new parameter. It's gonna have the same name. There are one left, instance. It already knows it's a yes, no, because we've already set it up that way but we do want this one to show up under the graphics. So we are just doing the same thing as we did in the symbol. We're just doing it now in the exit sign itself. So create this and I'll go through all the rest of these again. So there we've associated all of those. Now we don't need to associate the little hidden other parameters that we made because they're just part of the symbol itself and we don't need to get to those in the model. In fact, we don't want people to get to those. So we have all of these put in. Now, second face in the family is a type parameter again, because 
I typically have a different type, an X1 for a single face, X2 for a double face, for example. Then I want the arrows to be selectable in each instance. So there we go. Those are all mapped. And we can load this into our actual project as we, after we save it. And we're going to save it into this same folder. Okay. Save it. It already exists in the model which is our families model. And you're trying to load that already exists. Yes, overwrite it. And let's turn off our thin lines. Now we can see, now we'd already put this in sideways, but we can rotate it around and see that the arrows stay with it. And we can control the arrows. Here's our arrows as instance parameters. So for every X assign in here, we can control the arrows independently. Arrow right, arrow two right and left are off, and arrow one right and left are on and off. I mean, the only logic we haven't really included, because I don't want to get this to get too complicated, is we don't have logic tied to that second face. So if you happen to have a type put in here, it's a single face, oh, you could still go crazy and put some second face arrows in it, which don't make sense. So you have to apply some, you know, some, some smarts to this when you use it. We could have added more conditional statements into this that you can only see the second arrow if you have the second face enabled but again didn't want to get that complicated but you know that's part of the decision you make when you're creating families and custom content is how far to go with complication make it easy for the user without being too complicated and so that's one of those judgment calls anyway that is the main focus that i wanted to show you for this lesson and i hope you got something out of it look up here in the corner for another video that i think you'll find helpful thanks for watching.